Lofty heights, lofty heights. I've been uh, busy with the east side today. So I thought I'm going to just show you what I discovered. I've been checking to make sure that the night temperatures are still, still agreeing with the orchids. It's not cold at night enough for them to come inside. And I'm up here with my catacetums. Little update on the buds of the Jack of Diamonds. Hi, everybody. Sorry. <laughs> I, I just did it again. Yep, 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 yep. Thank you for being here very much. And if you're new to my channel, thank you very much for clicking on this video. I am on the east side of my property. I have east, south and west. I will do a little tour of every side in the coming days because things might change in a week. And now I still have the opportunity. So top shelf is the catacetums. At this point, I have three living up here. Jack of diamonds buds doing OK. I wish I knew if I should move them or not. I don't want them to blast. That's why I'm not moving the orchid as such. I've lost uh, the tip here. I had a wasp enjoying some happy sap and went a little bit too far, which made me less than happy. And here I just discovered before I put it back up. This is my after dark black pearl, Fred Clarkara. And I think there's a spike starting right there. That is awesome. If it's going to amount to anything is a different story. I may need to bring it in in order for it to progress. Huh, playing a little bit of a dice game here, a little bit of spike roulette. But at least it's trying and that's a good sign for me. That means we are now in blooming mode, at least age wise for this catacetum. And my Jumbo Mickey is not doing anything except bulging away the way it should. So I'm good, pleased about that, but I have some empty shelves down here to show you, giving us an opportunity to see what's going on with the collection on this side of the building. My ciliaris variety or steady eye is doing okay. Hanging in there, all the new growths have matured and the roots coming from those new growths are going into the pot to some degree, 50%, but I have enough in the pot to get it to a healthy status for next year's massive repot, which would be in August. Always an inopportune time. Next here, I have the Dawiana. And look at this, second new growth. My temperatures in this corner can for about four hours still be up to 28 degrees Celsius but the evenings will drop down to 15, 14. But the second growth of my Dawiana is still pushing on really well. And judging by the height of the sheath, I mean, this is not yet the last stop, but we're getting to a similar size as previously. As it's maturing during the colder months of the year, I doubt it will re reach the same size. However, as long as this orchid keeps bulking up, I am confident that we will be seeing blooms in maybe 15 months. <laughs> Stick around, watch the space. <laughs> but I'm really glad about this new growth coming along so well. And the reason I'm still leaving it outside is because it has more light out here than if I were to put the grow lights on in the dining room area, which we'll do a tour of after some of these videos. As long as I can film outdoors, I'm staying outdoors. This is Pastoral Innocence, massive repot earlier, like six weeks ago, maybe. And it's rooted in. <laughs> this thing is already rooted in. We cut the rhizome. Somebody else can have a piece of that. And I hope that it'll take for them as well. But six weeks later, this orchid is in its new pot solid based on the new roots that we used in order to do the radical change and chop. Very good. Exactly what I like to see. That is the result I want. Anybody remember this guy? <laughs> uh, I don't, I have to, oh yes. This is Rathara Fushu Glory. 
Happy holiday. That funky growth, stubby thing, weird thing, with a very, very funky sheath. Well, curiosity got the better of me and I started peeling away this sheath, letting it dry out, as you can see. But what I found inside was another chubby, chunky sheath. Very solid sheath, which was kind of bizarre. So I nipped that one in the bud, pardon the pun. <laughs> but um, I opened it up and look at this funky, chubby spike coming out with funky, chubby buds. Isn't that the weirdest thing ever? Now these might not even mature, but it's just the strangest thing ever. I'm going to leave them because also if I move this now, then I'm going to have definite problems and I cannot assess what the orchid is doing just because I've moved it. But blast will happen if I just move it around the corner. So it's going to stay. And if it stays because the cold got to it and the buds don't amount to anything, I will know for next time. If I move it now and the buds will blast, then I'll say, why did you do that? You know that's going to happen. But this is odd. I don't think this is normal. However, the subsequent growth is normal. Look at this. <laughs> Yay, so we have a little bit of a funky thing going on with my happy holiday here. It has the gorgeous, gorgeous second growth of the year coming. Full size, shooting up, normal development of the bifoliate apex just the way it should be. And is there anything inside there? Is this too much wishful thinking? Oh, it's still closed. We'll leave it. But yeah, great growth. Thank you very much. Whatever little issues it had, maybe it's out of the system. Epidendrum stamfordianum here is doing fabulous. Has matured gorgeous growths this year. I've got two. So I'm very hopeful to maybe get two spikes next season. That would be amazing. Long bloomer, long bloomer. But these two growths are just, just stunning. And they did well with the training. They're in back into the pot. They have the right angle. I like to see that. Excuse the leaves from before. That's uh, thanks to the nursery. And that's how it came. We're doing our best to eradicate whatever issues it had prior to coming into my collection. And Darwinara Blue is just chilling, literally chilling, getting lots of light. I'm not watering as much anymore. It gets a little bit of a spray early in the morning to dry out, but there is no more of this radical, I'm going to go for it and douse the orchid. And the fans are coming along really well as well. Seems to be a slow grower. Once it stops, it literally just boom, stops. So the reservoir is half full and that's how I'm going to keep it until it absorbs it. And then I'll just fill up to a third based on winter climate. Let's go down one more. Recently, we saw Lelia Flava when we had our little rain session, which was awesome. And that new growth handled the rain, the downpour, very, very well. So don't stick my finger on it and break it. You can see it's a little bit camouflaged in there. So Lelia Flava is doing well. I'm expecting a little bit more of a substance. I want bigger growths. But again, at time of year, I'm not entirely sure. The more it bulks up now, though, the better for it, because I need to get that out of the pot um, I would say as soon as possible, but I'm biding my time, possibly early spring, see what it does. It's been in there only one year, but it is so pot bound and so vigorous in the root department. I want to clean that pot out and uh, resituate it. And my Anciela Africana. I know she's still a baby and she should be like four feet canes, but I love this orchid doing well, finally. I've got roots growing in the deposit down here. Makes it a little bit more of a headache to have her placed somewhere. I have to make sure I 
put her on a grate if I want her to be flushed properly. Loving these aerial roots coming here. And this is like a late start new growth and a very late start new growth, but that would be the third and fourth of the season after getting established in semi-hydro. And I'm hopeful. Now this orchid can take off and become a weed, in my opinion. Wonderful stuff. Love these, love these spindly little roots here. <laughs> All right, next up, we have Siamese Dull Kiwi over here. Just checking up, the reservoir is about a third. A third new growth later in the season from this orchid. Just one, although I have two leads. And I did take it out, unpotted it, cleaned up the root ball, divided it, um, while this new growth was just down here. So I don't know if that would stop it developing another lead over here. I find that all a little bit strange just to get one. But never mind, I doubt this has got any blooming potential. I think this one just enjoyed the fact it was hot and sent out another growth. So Siamese Doll Kiwi ticking over nicely. It's already pot bound. After that repot with the new roots, it's already in there solid. And here's little fairy, the one that is going to be my lesson for all semi-hydro or self-watering based on oxygen and what can happen. And it's doing fabulous. I have no issues with this orchid whatsoever. We timed it quite correctly. It is also back pot bound, even though this, this little growth here didn't amount to the same height as before. But this is my case study for everything semi-hydro and self-watering. And I did a video on that and I will link it below because it is the reason why sometimes semi-hydro can fail and we got it just in time. So if anybody's interested, you can either check the card or the link below to see what happened with Little Fairy and what can happen in this growing method, but there is no need for this circumstances to arise, knowing what we know. And the sheath has a little bit of a bulge in it, which is great. I don't think I'm going to get the display I got last year. I think I had about nine blooms, something like that. But still, she's back. She's pot bound. That's all I need to know. We're on our way and we learned a lot from it. And I have more on the table over here because I pulled them. And one we haven't seen for ages is my Dendrobium speciosum maituru, my little variegated Dendrobium. Isn't that just the cutest thing ever? Only one growth this year, but the first one in my care, and I've had it, I think two years now, let me check. Yeah, November, it'll be two years I've had this orchid, and the four growths that I grew since then have all been single-leaved, and this is the first new growth I've grown with double leaves. So, well, I usually get two per year. Hmm. I guess not. I guess you can't have double leafed and two growths. I don't know, but it's doing well. I'm just using now plain RO water with this one. And um, if the reservoir goes empty, then it goes empty because it's not doing anything. It's grown its way through the season. And I don't consider it a rester, but if it's not growing much, there's no need to keep filling the reservoir. And here is Lelia Zip. We recently saw her. This is my Purpurata variety Vekhoiserin. Also doing really well after that radical repot. And it's also pot bound again. Fabulous. Working well. And you can see how the moss is growing back. Even though we cleaned it up. And I don't like that. Ooh, juicy roots. Yeah, look at this. Ah, sight for sore eyes. Love it. And it looks like there's two new leads starting. One there and one there. 
we're going to have to watch out for that and maybe bring it in so that we can encourage those leads to grow and not stall. And here, look at that. <laughs> yes, this is an orchid that I have not addressed because it was in, hello, where do we go? Around this way, there. It was in bud. When I was doing my mass repot session, this is my Sunya Green Mailman. And for the second year in a row, it blasted the buds, even though this time I didn't move it. Last year, the buds blasted after I moved it to my blooming alley. And I thought, okay, I'm not gonna do that again this year. And they blasted again. This time, at least, I got a bud shape out of it for what it's worth. So I don't know what's going on with this orchid, except that I should be addressing it immediately. Because you can see the pot is broken. That means this root ball is solid and I've got new roots growing. And I'm hesitant to do that. It is the end of October. So yeah, I'm hesitating. I don't know whether I'm gonna attack it or not. The more I look at it, the more I say I'm gonna to have to plan for this and do it anyway. But yeah, that's why it was left out of the massive repot session that was due this year because of those buds. And now I've got this conundrum. Anyway, next up is my Zagarik Wax, African Beauty. Also got chopped up and not quite pot bound, but wow, there is resistance. There is some serious resistance and I could keep yanking and eventually she might come out, but doing really, really well. So happy with this one because now I can leave it in the pot for another two years and we can enjoy some blooms hopefully again next year. It'll be awesome. New growth on Lelia purpurata variety striata. I have quite a few purpuratas. I have some doubles because I'm never sure how the blooms will come out. So I bought doubles. New growth, a little bit slow, but that's not surprising considering the time of year. But she is doing wonderful. So happy that all the repots that we have done are responding. And my new acquisition of this year is my Durigan, Trucero do Sul. This is the new growth that was actually developing when it came out of the box from Floralia. The growth was up to about here. And we have now the full matured growth with two gorgeous leaves. And there is a swelling in the middle there. I am not keeping my hopes up on this. I am not. I don't want the disappointment. But the fact that she just jumped right in with those few roots that she had growing, the little nubbins, she's, she is somewhat pot bound. Don't want to overdo it, but no, she took off the moment she hit that lecker. Just went and had a great time. And I'm really pleased, so happy. Wishlist Orchid, keeping her happy as Larry here. Here's my Wabash Valley, things to look forward to. Two buds, three buds. So very happy to see that. Throwing out a late season new growth here to the right of, on this lead, but nothing here on the left. Again, very strange, why one and not the other? But it was repotted, it was divided, it was it went through a massive root rejuvenation. Um, so yeah, maybe only one new growth because of that. And it's a little bit smaller. That's not going to grow to the full size. Never mind. Anything that can become a storage facility is welcome. And here we have a sneak preview of my first time bloomer. And I will feature her in blooms for you because she's been allocated. This is Chrysnetia Green Light. No fragrance. First time bloomer for me. And I, maybe that is because of the first time blooms. I don't have a fragrance. But look at this cuteness. And I'm not going to go into too much detail because we'll have a video coming up soon where I'll feature just her. Doing really well though. So pleased to see this one in bloom. Ah, 
Look at the back of those petals and sepals. Oh, all right, moving on. <laughs> Here is Lelia Paparata Verkhäuseriheim, and she bloomed this year for me for the first time. Three blooms, gorgeous, gorgeous fragrance. The lemon, it was like lemon sherbet, creamy. Oh, so good. Second new growth coming up. It's going to be a stonker. A tad higher than the other one. It is going to be a stonker. I'm so happy because she got then repotted and divided. She is not quite pot bound yet, but solid in the pot with what's growing now. Absolutely thrilled to bits how this one's coming along. Look at that growth. <sighs> Nani Puakea, Dokashima. We also had issues like with the little fairy and we got it in time. We did have some viable roots left. I didn't divide it because I wanted a healthy big piece as opposed to weak small pieces. You can see some stress in the leaves. Not that much though. And already starting on a new growth right here. No new roots though. So this one is definitely one that I'm going to bring in, even though the evenings are still acceptable, but maybe not so much for this one. And here is my Rincolelia Sunya Green, not named. The other one was Mailman. This one got chopped up as well. Big division was taken off. I kept the smaller division with new roots growing here, doing fabulously considering how much this orchid went through. And you can see how stressed it became. This division really, really started to weaken. The bulbs started to shrivel and bend. These were used to be straight. This used to be a straight bulb. This one was always a bulb that did the yoga from Jump Street. I mean, when it grew, it just grew yoga. So not concerned about that. The wrinkles, yes. None of them had wrinkles, so it was super stressed. But the piece that I got to send away didn't. The piece that I got to send away went into the pot and just got moving. No second hiccups, nothing. This piece, hmm, a little bit of a struggle, but only the back bulbs. Here the front, this growth is looking still really, really solid and healthy. And now that the roots are in the pot, the other bulbs in the back will pick up as well. Of that, I'm certain. Absolutely. Got a little bit worried there for a moment, but I knew I had roots and it was just a question of time. Be patient. Don't panic. Don't freak out. She'll be okay. It's when I saw the other one take off, I was like, really? That huge piece really didn't skip a beat. So with the Sunya Green, I think I had enough storage in the, in the front here in order to keep the smaller piece. But I guess it needs more than that. We haven't lost her though. It's just a little question of time. A bit stressful, maybe a bit too much, maybe a bit radical. But she is going to pull through. No problems, Hakuna Matata. I have one more here. This is my Brasolelio Cattleya Golden Cellar which is a beautiful orchid, blooms normally around Christmas time, if I remember correctly, hmm. something like that. Um, not much to say here, except that, you know, I haven't lost the sheath, despite the fact she got a radical repotting session as well. Had to clean up the root system, clean up the entire aeration of the pot, and didn't actually skip a beat. And so it's doing really well. I'm, I'm, I'm not worried about this orchid at all. She's pot bound again, but I'm missing one. I wanted to show you one and I'm missing it. Where did it go? Hang on a second. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Just while I was like, where are you? How can I miss you? And I'm sorry, I'm showing you the worst side of it. The burnt leaf of the summer. Yeah. But let me show you the good side of it. This is the growth of my Brassocatlia golf green hair pig. This is this year's growth. 
Look at this. Oh, <laughs> look at this growth. Oh, I love it. How could I miss it? I was up here on the top shelf just now. Oh, anyway. So we have the sheath. Thank you very much. There is a bump. Now this one normally blooms for me after my Brassavola digbiana. And my Brassavola digbiana is nowhere near maturing her growths. And there's a bump in here. So hmm, maybe, maybe it's going to bloom sooner this year. I don't care. I don't care when it blooms. Look at this thing. Oh my goodness. That is what I call a growth. Thank you. <laughs> Next year, we're going to have to address this orchid though. It is time. It is past time. Even if I don't wait till next year, I don't know. But we'll wait and see what the sheath does first. And we'll address everything else after that. Pretty, 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 pretty. So it was not my intention. There's lots of goodies going on here, but it seems like I saved the best for last. This is my east facing tour before I probably think the temperatures will drop, just taking advantage of no glaring sunshine, no harsh shadows, and letting you know how things have developed here over the course of the last four weeks, five weeks. I don't know how long it's been. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you again so much for watching. Thank you to everybody that is watching for the first time. Let me know that you're here and I hope that you come back. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Take care. Stay safe. Bye.